Back in the early 2000s, the Anzari X Prize was a $10 million competition launched to spur development of crewed spaceflight, bring space travel to the general public, and jumpstart a commercial space industry. 26 contestants would vie for the achievement of being the first non-government organization to launch a reusable crewed spacecraft within two weeks of each other. Spaceship One by Scaled Composites was ultimately the successful vehicle which made flights on September 29th, 2004 to 103 kilometers above Earth's surface and October 4th, 2004 to 112 kilometers altitude. Also in 2004, Richard Branson, founder of the Virgin Group of Companies, announced he would set up a company to offer commercial flights to space using vehicles based on Spaceship One. At the time, Virgin planned to have people riding into space by 2007. However, it has been far from a smooth road for the would-be space airline. In July of 2007, an explosion killed three employees working on testing components in a horrible tragedy for the company, the employees, and their families. Seven years later, in 2014, the company's new model, the Spaceship 2, also encountered a disaster. 11 seconds after being released from its carrier plane, the vehicle broke apart, resulting in the death of co-pilot Mike Alsbury while miraculously, the pilot survived, but with serious injuries. The next Virgin Galactic space plane, the VSS Unity, was unveiled two years later, named by the late, great Stephen Hawking. Following several test flights, Richard Branson and four Virgin employees finally made the trip 53 miles above the Earth's surface and beat out Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin in the race to launch first. Meanwhile, the stock has similarly gone through quite a roller coaster ride of euphoria and tragedy for investors. Going public via SPAC on October of 2019, the stock price quickly shot up on a trajectory more similar to that of a rocket going to space than a Virgin Orbit's airport based takeoffs, despite not yet making any money. The stock became known for wild swings in share price and quickly attracted investors among space enthusiasts, short-term traders, and frankly, just gamblers. This is when the meme stock trading really hit prime time and the subreddit Wall Street Bets became a household name. For those who are not as familiar with the forum, it is basically a place where users share their trading results on high-risk short-term options trades, try to band together to cause short squeezes on companies that are heavily shorted, and also just mostly post funny pictures and videos around investing. It's not hard to see why people would get sucked into making their own bet on the company. If you stop by Wall Street Bets around 2021, you would be inundated by posts like these ones of users sharing their massive gains in extremely short periods of time on the stock. Here we have a 10,150% return in just two days on a short-term option play, which resulted in making $40,800 off of just a $200 gamble. On another trade, 10,000% return turned $400 into $25,000 in a similar short period of time. This one here sports a $33,000 return in a single day. And of course, let's not forget this fortunate user who started off with $250,000 and became a millionaire in a little over a month thanks to trading on the stock. Who wouldn't want to jump in while seeing posts like that? With a little luck and putting your life savings into Virgin Orbit stock, you might not have to work another day for the rest of your life. It wasn't all just sharing gain results either. You would often find funny videos like this one talking about how the stock would go to the moon. Gentlemen, I'm about to go to the moon. Begin the countdown. Five, four, three, 
Colonel, you better take a look at this radar. What is it, son? I don't know, sir. However, as was inevitable for a company with zero revenue, zero profits, and a valuation of over $8 billion, eventually the music stopped. Posts of gleefully riding rockets out of the stratosphere changed into ones more like this. Here we have a user who lost 75% of their savings, $152,000. Another one here, down $185,000, also extremely quickly. Also, all too many were like this one, where investors are still hanging on for the ride, not sure what they should do, and not willing to sell their shares and accept huge losses. Here's the stock chart as it looks today. Meanwhile, the company itself, after experiencing delay after delay, now appears poised to begin commercial flights in Q2 of this year. Following this, the CEO says that the company should be able to reach a monthly cadence in a short period of time. Behind the scenes though, Virgin Galactic has been burning through huge amounts of cash in order to get to this point. So, is there any hope for the space investors who are still holding on and imagining that the stock might return to its former glory? Let's dive in and take a look together. Well, that's quite a story, guys. It's not very often that when you look at a company, the story of the stock itself is as crazy as the story of the company, especially when it's a space company trying to launch people into, well, not orbit, but 50 miles uh, above Earth's surface. Uh, really wild stuff. But what we're looking into today is where the company stands today and whether they are worth investing in. They are burning prodigious amounts of cash but they're finally getting to the point where they hope to be able to launch passengers on a regular basis fingers crossed for them of course it's been an extremely long road since that x prize was originally won way back in 2004. There's been a lot of updates recently. The stock price has taken massive hits and we've seen Richard Branson's other company, Virgin Orbit, go through a lot of troubles on the verge of bankruptcy. It's starting to look like they might get bailed out now, at least for the short term, but that does remain to be seen. Everything is still in flux and uh, that raises a lot of questions for this company as well as it was founded by the same group, the same billionaire, and uh, we are wondering, at least I'm wondering, if it might face the same fate eventually. So let's take a quick look at Virgin Galactic's financial situation, what they said in their last earnings call, uh, how fast they're burning cash, how much cash they have, whether I think it would be a good investment, all that sort of thing. Before we do that, though, if you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe down below to help out with the channel. I appreciate every subscriber so much. And with that, let's dive in to Virgin Galactic. So now that you know the story of Virgin Galactic, let's look at some charts of their financial situation and see how the business is doing. I'm using a site called Main Street Data here. I just came across it recently seems pretty good reminds me a lot of hyper charts if you remember that site before it got purchased so what we're looking at right now is the income overview uh, in orange we have operating income blue is gross profit and light blue is revenue we can see that they're significantly uh, in the negatives when it comes to operating income right now we're sitting at around negative 150 million dollars Whereas revenue is pretty much negligible, pretty much non-existent, except for a few 
tiny little blips at various quarters. We did have an extremely high burn back in Q4 of 2019, but right now it looks like we're at a steady slight increase of $150 million. Continuing on with net income, we can see the same kind of trend. We're looking at a net income number in the last quarter where we burned about $150 million, and that seems to be kind of the, the state of things with the company and uh, what I would expect for the next few quarters at least. Cash position, because when you're burning this much cash, you really need to know how much you have in the bank, how long you can sustain burning this kind of capital and uh, without going bankrupt. So very important to look at with these kind of companies. And what we're seeing is they do actually have a pretty sizable cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet. I was actually impressed with how much they did have. I didn't expect it to be this high, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, it's been rising since Q4 of 2021. So if their cash is rising, and they're not making any money as we saw previously where's the money coming from well it's got to be either taking on more debt or diluting shareholders issuing new shares making that pie bigger and each slice of the pie smaller uh, so we can look into this and we can see with shares outstanding yes there has been some dilution especially back in 2019, but uh, since then it's been kind of slow and steady, not a, a crazy in increase, but we have gone from 200 million shares to, uh, you know, decently over 250 million. Looks to me like 260 plus million shares. So there is some dilution going on, but I would say not enough to justify that much of an increase in cash on the balance sheet. So some of that cash has to be coming from somewhere else other than dilution. And uh, we can see indeed here on the balance sheet, we have total assets, total liabilities, and total equity. It's always nice to look at for any stock in equity, total assets in green. We're looking at about a billion dollars, a little bit over. That includes their cash as well as equipment, facilities, stuff like that, anything that may be of value. But total liabilities, interestingly, actually had a big jump back in Q4 of 2021 to Q1 of 2022. We're seeing a jump of about 200 million to over 600 million, and it was actually $659 million in liabilities so that's probably taking on additional debt and i think that's why we're seeing the big jump in the cash there so you have to remember even though they do have that position they still need to service this debt pay interest on it pay it down and you can't forget about that you can't just look at the cash and think okay we've got almost a billion dollars and that's it there is this significant amount of debt you have to worry about as well as a shareholder and then just looking at some highlights for 2022 on the financial side of things. We saw previously their burn rate. If you annualize those quarters, we got a net loss of $500 million for the year. Half a billion dollars of cash burned through. That's a lot of money to go through while making zero revenue. I've never actually seen, I don't think, a company burn half a billion dollars and literally have zero revenue. It's pretty crazy. Maybe it's happened a few times, you know, with uh, other companies like Nikola and stuff like that, but not something you see very often for sure. SG&A, selling general and administrative expenses, 175 million compared to 167. That's a pretty normal increase. I wouldn't be too c concerned about that one, as well as um, our R&D was 314 million compared to 144 in the previous year. Now that is a big increase. That's probably why we're seeing such a huge loss in this year. Uh, not too worried about adjusted EBITDA, stuff like that right now, because I think net loss really tells the main story we have to worry about at this point. But I did find it interesting to see we we had dilution here, uh, generated $103 million this year in gross proceeds through issuing 16.3 million shares of common stock. So that's going back to the shares outstanding here. We can see it rising. They did issue 16 million shares. So... Um, shareholders are being diluted a bit there but beyond that we have 425 million in proceeds through the issuance of convertible senior notes on january 19th 2022 so that's some debt that they do have to worry about 
And that really kind of explains where the cash is coming from, how they're able to continue growing that balance sheet, or at least they were for a while, while burning large amounts of cash. You have to think they're burning about $500 million a year. Uh, that's about 160 flights of their VSS Unity spacecraft in order to pay for that. Uh, how are they going to get to 160 flights? How long is it going to take? Do they have enough money to get there? Because uh, that's really the whole ball game when it comes to a, a company like this. Can they get to profitability? And once they do, how profitable can they get? Well, as we said, they have like $800 million in cash, $500 million annual burn rate. You do the math on that. We're looking at a runway available of less than a year and a half with the current cash on hand if they don't raise additional capital. So do we think they can get to 160 flights in a year and a half in order to get break even before they run out of this cash that they're burning at a tremendous rate? Uh, I have my doubts about it, but uh, talking about future funding now, there's some kind of interesting developments on this lately. You've got to think about Richard Branson, founder of the company, his other company, Virgin Orbit, going through a lot of financial troubles right now as well. They recently had to halt operations, furlough most of their staff without pay, as I made a previous video on. You can check it in my video history if you haven't seen it, but basically... Richard Branson doesn't appear willing or able to infuse Virgin Orbit with any more cash. And a lot of people thought previously, like, he's a billionaire, he's a super rich dude. They, they just kind of assumed that he had endless amounts of cash that he could continue to fund these companies at a loss for as long as was necessary. And he would continue to do that. I think the story with Virgin Orbit shows that's not the case. You shouldn't just expect him to continue pumping in more cash and purchasing more shares of the company if things do not go well. His cash is not limit limitless and his willingness to continue supporting his companies is clearly not limitless either. So just a few notes from their most recent earnings call that I took a look at. The CEO is projecting that commercial flights of their spacecraft will start in Q2 of 2022, which will be a great milestone for the company. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching it. I'm not going to lie. Their spacecraft does look super cool. And uh, when it gets released from that carrier craft and jets off, it'll, it's definitely a sight to see for sure. Now, the CEO is saying that it'll take a few flights to hopefully get a handle of things. It'll start slowly and then build up to one flight per month, hopefully in the near future. I'm not too sure what you would consider near future, um, hopefully within a few months, but I do find space takes longer than anyone expects. So you might want to, in your own projections, if you're an investor in the stock, add a bit of time to what the company is saying here. So that would mean we're looking at maybe five launches this year, I think is reasonable, maybe four even if you, or even three, if it's that's, if it's a bit slower to build up to the one per month rate. So three launches this year and uh, each launch can carry six passengers, each of those passengers paying $450,000. Meanwhile, the company is burning $500 million per year, uh, not quite what they need to break even. Then we're talking about a launch rate of one per month. Not too sure how long it will take to ramp that up further. Seems like it'll be a while though, because I, I didn't see much talk of getting to that once a day point on the latest earnings call. I want to count on it by the end of 2024, the next year. So I think reasonable for number of launches in 2024 could be... Anywhere from, say, 12, which is one a month on the low end, to 30. I think I think 30 would be a pretty good result for the company. And even so, we're talking six passengers, 30 flights, uh, $450,000 each. You're still not really that close to break even at the end of 2024. Maybe you're starting to make a dent in that $500 million burn at that point but uh, you're not that close. So uh, definitely rough for the company. They really need to get that cadence going really high, really fast. And I just have some concerns about it. Now, they also do have 
a uh, next generation Delta class spaceship that they're working on in the future. They're still investing money into that. That ship is probably not going to be launching till at least say 2026 and the, the capital they're investing in it that will not uh, return on their investment at least until then, which has me concerned because I really think uh, 2024, 2025, even maybe towards the start of 2026, this company is going to be in a real problem with cash very similar to how Virgin Orbit is today. And then uh, just some other thoughts. So trips last about 90 minutes, as we said previously, cost 450 grand. Uh, personally, I don't think I'd spend that money on a 90 minute trip going up 50 miles above Earth's surface. Uh, not into orbit. You're not going to a space station or another destination. I think maybe if that was the case, I, it would be worth doing. It'd be pretty exciting. Maybe one day in the distant future going to like a moon colony or something like that. But even just going to a space station and getting to hang out there and orbit the Earth for a couple days. Now I think we're talking, but uh, just a quick trip, 90 minutes. You're probably only waitlist for a few minutes of that before you come back down. The rest of it is almost like a plane flight. Uh, I don't think I'd pay the $450,000. Let me know, though, if you were, say, a millionaire, perhaps a multi-millionaire, would you be willing to pay $450,000 for this experience? Maybe I'm in the minority here. Maybe demand is through the roof for this experience. Uh, I just have a bit of doubts how many people are able and willing to pay for it. Uh, the company also ran into issues with the FAA after Richard Branson's flight. flight. The uh, flight left the designated flight path, and they did have a warning going off, so there was an investigation following that. I think if you're looking at flying commercial flights every day, there's certainly going to be a big involvement with the FAA and regulators and approvals, so I wouldn't be surprised at all to have additional red tape slowing things down. So I don't know uh, how much issues that might cause, how much demand there would really be. Uh, maybe we can get a sense of that if you guys would definitely go for it down in the comments. That could give me a clue that maybe there is more demand for this than I think about. And I don't really know yet how many customers have already signed up, but I would be concerned about demand at this ticket price and and the viability of launching once a day where you're charging customers $450,000. So personally, I wouldn't touch the company. I wouldn't put my money into it. I'm sorry for anyone out there watching this who may have bought it during the mean stock peak up in the 50s even. Uh, I don't think this is a great investment right now. They're burning a lot of money every year. The number of flights they need to make in order to break even on that cash burn is quite high. I don't see them reaching it within the next couple of years. Meanwhile, their cash is only set to last maybe a year and a half at the current burn rate. So uh, definitely some belt tightening is needed for the company in the future. Probably some cash infusions that we don't know if Richard Branson is willing to make after what's happened recently with Virgin Orbit. And uh, you're probably looking at significant dilution and how much more debt can you really take on if you're not making any money at all at this point. So to wrap it up, uh, I'm a fan of space. I'm a fan of improving access to space. I love the technology. The plane looks super cool, I will admit for sure. And uh, I would never wish for them to fail. I definitely wish every space company uh, success. And uh, I'm really a fan of space in general and improving our technology, pushing things forward. But in terms of investing in this company, I wouldn't do it. I couldn't recommend it to any of you guys. Let me know down below in the comments if you're an investor, if you would pay $450,000 for this flight, if you did have the means, and uh, how you think the company's prospects will be. Personally, uh, the space tourism, unless you're going to a space station, uh, I'm not that interested in it. I will continue to watch the company closely going forward, see if they're getting any more cash, how frequently they do launch. It's one to keep an eye on in the future. Crazy story from the stock, crazy story getting to this point from that X prize all those years ago. But unfortunately, I just don't think it's a good investment at the end of the day. And that's what we're really about is as investors making money. Even if we think the technology is cool, the company has to make sense. And this one just doesn't to me, I'm sad to say. 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you haven't subscribed already, please do. Every subscriber helps out the channel so much. Uh, every like also helps out with the algorithm. And I hope you have a great week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.